Yo, what's good family? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video with the GT. As you can tell by the title of the video, I'm continuing with our maintenance series for the F34 with a transmission service. A lot of people aren't familiar with what the transmission service actually is. I know I wasn't until recently. And in a short explanation, it's really just an oil change for the transmission. You got your new transmission fluid, your new transmission oil pan with the built-in oil filter. And of course I got this transmission service kit from FCP Euro and I'll make sure to leave the link in the description. I've never done a transmission service before so it does seem like a daunting task, but we'll go ahead and take one step at a time and we'll knock it out. First things first is to get the car lifted in the air and you want it as level as possible to do this job. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift it up and put it on four jack stands. You guys have seen me lift the front of this car a couple times before on this channel, but I've never lifted the rear. I'm gonna lift the car by the rear differential. It can get a little bit sketchy, but I'm gonna make sure I go slow and see if I can get you guys some good shots of where I'm mounting the floor jack. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and put you on the tripod and put the car in the air. I haven't moved the floor jack yet because I want you guys to see where it's mounted at the diff. It's actually easier to look from this side. So I'm gonna jack the floor jack back up just a little bit so you can see that mounting point on the rear diff. One of the important things just to kind of stay away from that front lip. And I've also noticed, unlike the front where the floor jack kind of just lines up with the round L in the middle of the car, the rear mounting point is just a bit off to the left. And we're under the car. As you can see, I don't have the splash shield not sure why this looks like the hanger for it, but I just don't have one. So I'm skipping that part. And it looks like now I have to take off this heat shield right here because it's covering a couple of bolts that I have to take out like this one. And supposedly it's supposed to be three 13 mils, but that right there is not a 13 mil. So I managed to get the outermost of the three bolts on the heat shield off, one being right there and the other right there. This one is like impossible to get to without taking off this, I think. So I think that I can just manage by pushing it to the side a little bit. So I got the heat shield pushed back a bit. Now that that's out the way, I'll go ahead and break the fill plug loose. You definitely wanna make sure to crack the fill plug loose first. Make sure you can get it off. This one is going to be an eight millimeter hex. You want to make sure that's in there so you don't strip it out. Now, if you can check my setup, this was a little too bulky to fit into here and to brake torque. So I got a short extension and a swivel that was thin enough. And now I'll go ahead and try to break this free. Now it took all the elbow grease that I had, but I got this fill plug crack free. And now we can do the drain plug. This one's an eight mil Allen and this one will be a 10 mil. Yep, so it cracked. You can see that crack right there, right under the one, and that has prevented me from taking it out. So I went ahead and super glued it, see if this works. I'll come back in about 20 minutes, see if I can crack this loose. All right, so the super glue should be just about dry. What I also did is I cut a zip tie up and put the pieces in the little holes just to kind of make it more snug in there. And I'm pretty sure this should come out now. There we go. All right. Let me go ahead and get this drain pan ready. Whoa. I wanted to show you that old drain plug is still super glued, so that definitely worked. It cracked right there between the one and the end. Just looking at the design of this, it almost looks like it's designed to break when you try to undo it. The new drain plug has a slightly different design, so I don't think this will happen to me next time. Good thing I don't need this 10 mil hex for the rest of the job, so I'll worry about separating these two pieces later. Now while we let all the old fluid drain out, I'm gonna get my new fluid ready. The kit comes with six bottles of genuine ZF fluid and I don't have a power filler, so I'll be filling it back up the old school way with this fluid extractor I got off of Amazon. 
Now that that's come to a drip, I'm gonna go ahead and loosen these T40s around the transmission pan. There's 13 of them. And I'm gonna take all these out, except the corner ones, so it doesn't fall on my face. All right, so now we got the old pan off. I'm gonna let this drip a couple more minutes. You do wanna make sure this old O-ring came out with the old filter and didn't stay in the oil pump. And before I put the new pan on, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this mating surface where it's gonna sit just to make sure we get a good seal. Now the new pan comes with a gasket installed, the new O-ring, the 13 new T40 bolts, and a new fill plug. Now lastly, before we put the new pan on, I'm gonna take some fresh fluid and lube up this new O-ring. To be honest, this stuff stinks. And when you first put the panel on, you want to make sure this O-ring seats up here. Yep, there we go. All right, now that we got all the transmission pan bolts in, we'll go ahead and torque them down. The torque spec for these plastic pans is four Newton meters plus 45 degrees. There is a torquing sequence I'm going to use. I'm going to throw it up on the screen. Now that I got the band bolts torqued down, I'll go ahead and take out this fill plug. All right, it started to overflow. Got my fill plug temporarily installed. Now I'm gonna turn the engine on, start the car. We need the transmission oil temperature to be between 30 and 40 degrees Celsius for our second fill. I'm gonna be using the Bimmerlink app on my iPhone, partnered with my VPeak OBD2 Bluetooth adapter to read the transmission oil temperature. So I'll go ahead and wait a couple more degrees, maybe 34, 35. And we'll go ahead and do our next fill. Now that she's quieting down, I'll go ahead and go through the gears. First, we'll go to reverse. Hold that for five. Drive. We'll go to manual. Put it back in park. To rev the engine to 2000 RPM for about 30 seconds. So at this part of the process, while the engine is still running and the trans oil temperature is between 30 and 40 degrees Celsius, remember we only installed the fill plug loosely and temporarily. You wanna go ahead and remove that and see if there's any overflow. If there isn't, go ahead and top off until there is overflow. That's what I ended up doing. The kit actually comes with seven one liter bottles of new transmission fluid. I ended up having almost two full bottles left over. So accounting for some spillage, I say the transmission took about four and a half liters of new fluid. It's been about three weeks since I did the transmission service and placebo effect aside, I really can feel the difference in how the car shifts. It shifts buttery smooth now and I definitely have plans to throw a transmission tune on this real soon. This was a tougher DIY job with the car on four jack stands and not a lift just because you don't have so much room to work under there on the floor, but definitely doable. And if you have the tools and decide to do it yourself, especially if you get the kit from FCP Euro, I'm sure you'll save some good money versus having an independent shop do it. Oddly enough, the BMW dealership does not offer this as a service as they list the transmission fluid as a lifetime fill. This is contradictory because the people who designed this transmission, ZF, recommend changing the fluid every 62,000 miles or at least every eight years. But it's also important to note that if you operate your transmission at higher temperatures, the fluid can age faster, calling for an even shorter interval. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on future content and what I'm doing next for the GT. As always, y'all stay safe, be blessed, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.